Hello, this is a pathology specimen comprising the articular surface of the tibia and we're looking at it uh, head on. So this is the actual articular surface. This brownish tissue at the periphery is the synovial tissue. And there is also uh, some very thickened, hyperplastic appearing synovial tissue that has been bisected here. So this is the cut surface and you can see how thick the synovium is. Here is the flat cut surface of the subchondral bone. So the main features seen in this specimen are markedly hyperplastic synovial tissue seen here as well as at the periphery of the articular surface and also some degree of erosion of the articular surface without a nice smooth layer of overlying cartilage. The diagnosis here is rheumatoid arthritis. The term arthritis means inflammation of the joints and rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disorder in which there is breakdown of tolerance to our own self antigens that are located within joints. So this is initiated by the helper T cells which become activated and they also promote antibody production against the self antigens in joint tissues. This results in a proliferative and inflammatory synovitis. So these are the two main pathological processes that are happening happening. And this can also give rise to uh, extra articular manifestations uh, in the skin, in the heart, in the blood vessels, in the form of vasculitis, and in the lungs, etc. Clinically, the diagnosis is usually made on serologic tests as well as imaging, particularly of the skeletal system. And this tends to involve small joints, for example, in the hands and the feet. Uh, the patients will experience swelling, painful joints, and morning stiffness that actually persists. And this is one key difference between rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis, in which the stiffness becomes better with movement. There is also reduced range of movement. And eventually, these patients can develop very severe bony deformities, such as radial deviation of the wrists, etc. And this can impact uh, their function. There are also extra articular manifestations, but uh, we will focus here on the joint related pathology. In terms of gross morphology involving the joints, there is synovial hyperplasia, swelling and edema. And eventually, this can give rise to pannus formation. And this is what we see here. It's essentially a mass of edematous and very inflamed synovial tissue. This pannus may overgrow into the actual articular surface and it can erode into the bone in the periarticular tissues, giving rise to bone cysts. And eventually, because of this marked inflammation, there can actually be fusion of the joint, which means this can result in marked loss of range of movement. Microscopically, uh, as described, the pannus will actually show rather hyperplastic synovial tissue and this can almost have a villous or papillary uh, appearance on low magnification. And we can see a lot of blue areas here, which is uh, the presence of a lot of inflammatory cells, mostly chronic inflammatory cells. And there also may be some accompanying fibrinopyrulent exudates on the synovial and joint surfaces. And in addition, the pannus may also directly erode the articular cartilage. This is a higher magnification view showing the hyperplastic synovial lining here. And there are lots of chronic inflammatory cells within the synovial tissue. In particular, we can see very obvious plasma cells. And if you remember, these are the cells that produce antibodies. And there are also numerous lymphocytes. Here is a large lymphoid aggregate. Hence, in summary, we can see that this is the articular tissue from the tibia with an eroded articular surface that is eroded by overgrowth of this brownish hyperplastic synovium, which is known as the pannus. And here is an example of a part of the pannus tissue that has been bisected to show this markedly thickened hyperplastic synovium. And the diagnosis is rheumatoid arthritis. Thank you.